Today on Homeworthy, we're pulling back the curtain of one of the biggest antique fairs in the country, Round Top, Texas. We'll be guiding you through the tent of one of the fair's most prolific antique dealers, East End Salvage. Casey Lyford, who started East End Salvage with her husband Robert, shows us her favorite pieces in their collection this season. Enjoy! My name is Casey and I'm with East End Salvage and we're here at our white barn at Blue Hills at the Round Top Antique Show. I'm going to show you inside. So I wanted to start with a little bit about our business. So we focus on European antiques. I buy everything from a few countries, England, France, Belgium, the Netherlands, a little bit of Sweden and actually in this collection we have some beautiful pieces from Italy as well. When I'm sourcing pieces, there's a few things that I like to look for. I want to make sure that the piece is authentic. I'm really looking for the real deal, uh, true antiques, no reproductions at all. So when I buy a piece, I really examine it and make sure that it has um, a few things that I think are important. Uh, one, I want to make sure that the piece is made with sturdy materials. If it is a painted piece, I want to see character to it. I want to see the paint has fall, fallen off and that it's not a, that it's originally old paint. Um, with the stained pieces, I like to see character and different darks and lights within it that also shows uh, authenticity. I'm also looking for pieces that are functional. I think it's very important that a table is the right height to eat at or a table is the right height to use in the kitchen as an island. I want to make sure that cabinets have shelves that we can be used. So it's very important that a piece can be taken into a modern home and be used in today. Another thing I'm looking for is patina. I think it's really important that pieces have character to them that show worn spots and even cracks and crackle areas and splits in the wood. Things that like really show that it was used and it was loved and that it's been in this world for a long time. Okay, so now let's walk around because I want to point out a few of my favorite pieces in this collection. This must be my favorite piece. Uh, at least I've claimed it to be and I said it out loud multiple times. So I want to talk about this. This uh, is a screened cabinet. It's made out of oak. The frame is oak, but it has this beautiful old metal screening in it. And it would have been used as a food pantry. It was found in north, the northern side of France and it was used at a farmhouse. I think it is beautiful even inside as well. It has these really large slatted shelves, so it has great storage. And I could see it obviously in a kitchen again, full of dishes, but I could also see it in a bedroom full of quilts or in a bathroom with beautiful fluffy white towels. I love this old book. It's dated 1645. It's from Italy. It just amazes me that something this old has lasted all of these years. These little pots were used for escargots to serve escargot in restaurants in France. Okay, so I wanted to show you this piece. Uh, this is a personal piece. So many of you probably don't know, but I'm an entrepreneurial at heart and this is my third small business. My first business when I was younger, I was a decorative painter. So we did murals and faux finishing and all these specialty decorative paint techniques, ironically to make pieces look old. Uh, so it is kind of funny that now I buy pieces that actually are old that have the original paint. But for 10 years of my life, I uh, really tried to replicate old finishes which I think is kind of giving me an advantage because I can tell if a piece is authentically old or if it's been uh, touched up or repainted in today's world. I kind of know all the secrets. But I wanted to point this piece out because this is an old muralist ladder. It's uh, early 20th century. It came from France. Um, it was used at, for an artist who would have uh, stood on the top here and had his paint can so he could easily, um, you know, reach the highest point. And it has these old wooden wheels that I just think are charming. Um, I cleaned this piece up. It had, it was, didn't just have paint on it, but it had a lot of dirt on it as well. And I think it would be beautiful if it were just like a showpiece in the entry. You could put a lamp on it with a stack of books. You could even lay books on the steps here. And I just think it would be a statement piece in whichever room. 
So I have this incredible collection. Look at how many there are, and they're all different. These are old mustard pots. Uh, they're from the Netherlands and Belgium, and they were all handmade out of stoneware. And every single one is slightly different. Some of them have the maker's marks and the stamps and all the different coloring. And I just think they're the most charming little decorative object. All right, I wanted to show you this piece because it's very, very special and very rare. Uh, we actually found this hat rack at the Paris flea market and just had to have it. I have not seen a piece like it before. It is handmade out of bamboo, wicker, and rattan that was all painted in the 1920s. It was originally used in a hat shop in Italy. It probably had feminine, delicate little woman's hats on it, but we're in Texas, so I had to put a collection of cowboy hats. So as we've been walking through, you may have noticed that there's quite a bit of architectural paneling throughout the space. Uh, this beautiful piece that is peeking through the hat rack that has all got plaster detail work on it. And then we have this really large one over here. So these panels would have been installed originally in prestigious homes throughout France. I can only imagine the house that this panel came out of. This is an entire wardrobe wall. It was pulled out of a house in France, in the northern side of France, and it was actually in these people's living room. Uh, it is cabinet doors that all open, and it would have actually been built in for storage. And it is all original with the original paint, multiple doors, and wait until you see the feet at the bottom. Uh, this piece would be the statement in any room. I could see it used in a bedroom, uh, as the actual wardrobe closet in the bedroom. It could be in a kitchen where it would cover all the dishes and your pant as your pantry space. Obviously, it can be put in the living room or a dining room again as well. When I mention patina, this table is exactly what I'm talking about. Look at on the drawer here, how the center part has been worn off completely. And it's because of all the years of somebody opening and closing and opening and closing that drawer. That tells the story of how old this piece is. So many people ask me, what do I personally collect? What do I take home? And I've got to say it's rag paper books. I love 18th century books from France and they're beautiful handmade tattoos paper edges and all the pastel colors uh, so this is something that I'm always on the hunt for when we were in Paris earlier this year we stumbled upon this amazing collection of pharmacy jars and just had to have them I love how some of the labels are so worn you can just barely read them and some of them are brighter with the gold leaf still showing I love bringing pieces that are typically used outdoors indoors uh, this is a beautiful centerpiece, but look at this old farm trough that was once used to feed animals. Um, I think it would be an amazing powder room sink. These old crocs are, were originally intended for jam and marmalade in England, uh, but we're talking Victorian time period, so these are old. A friend of mine, Andrew, lives in England and he is a hobbyist and he goes into landfills, believe it or not, and he digs these out and all cleans them and he ships them to us. Um, I think they are so special because obviously there are hundreds right here, but they're all different. Literally every one is a different shade of cream or white. They all have different patterns to them. Uh, the best ones are my favorite, are the ones that have markings on the bottom. Uh, let's see, this one is Middleton. This one is Liverpool and London. And so that really tells the story of who made them, what they were used for. We love them. We use um, them for fresh flowers. Uh, you could put plant seedlings in them, obviously pens and pencils in the office or uh, toothbrushes in the bathroom. There's a lot of uses for them, but I want to show you what we do with them. That's my favorite use. I'll take you this way. So we repurpose these old marmalade jars into candles. Uh, my friend Renee, she hand pours each one with soy wax and all essential oils, so there's no nasty chemicals in these. And our signature scent is called English Moss because it reminds me of all of our travels through the Cotswolds in England. I love a good collection of French pottery. All of this pottery was made in the 19th century and it was actually utilitarian pottery used for olive oil and olives. Um, and 
And although it was meant to be used indoors, we love bringing it outside in the garden for plants. Thanks for coming along with the tour. Again, my name is Casey. I'm with East End Salvage. Our little white brick barn here at Blue Hills will be open during the Round Top Antique Show. We're here every spring, fall, and winter. We would love to see you sometime. But if you can't join us in person, we have an online store and we sell on Instagram and you can follow us there. See ya! Thanks for watching. Go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content and shopping guides.